That sounds better. That yeah. sounds much better, actually. Like that. that sounds good. All right, man. Yeah. Here we are. Tales of Macaque podcast. First one ever recorded in Joshua Tree. Right now, Rex Nelson and I sitting by the campfire. Sun has just gone down in Joshua Tree. Well, I guess we're not in Joshua Tree. <laughs> we're we were in Joshua Tree last night. We had a nice we're campground at the Indian Cove. We're not in the national park, but we're we are in, park. in the area of Nash- of Joshua Tree Lake. We're across the street from the park. <laughs> we're across the freeway. The, across the, I think it's the 62 freeway we're across from the 62 from national Joshua park. Tree. We had a glorious day. We went on how many hikes today? Three hikes all around Joshua Tree. Three hikes. Today, Started out yes. on Indian Cove, went up. We went on went two across. hikes in Indian Cove, right? Two hikes in Indian Cove. And then we only had, so th- this trip really came together quickly, right? So on Sunday, I was looking for <laughs> places to be. Well, uh, you, well let's go back. Tuesday. Let's go back a little bit further. You told me about three weeks ago that you got a new job, and yes, you, and then that you wanted to go on a camping trip right before the new job as kind Just of a uh, exactly as kind of a uh, last hurrah to the previous life that you used yeah. to have. Yeah, yeah. So I got a new job. Last time we were talking about, um, I applied for a cruise ship job, a job I did not get. I got an email from Princess saying I did not get it. So I went out for Princess a... Princess Cruise Lines. Princess Cruise Lines. Did not get that job. But I did get an accounting job with Ocean Property Management. The same guy who owns it, he's a family friend of mine. Give him the fun fact about this gentleman. <laughs> so for this year, my birthday was March 14th. That's the day that I went in there for an interview. My 25th birthday. 12 years to the day prior, that same guy had gotten me WrestleMania tickets. I was in Madison Square Garden for my 13th birthday watching WrestleMania courtesy of the same guy that I now work for. Yeah. And so I start work on Monday. And so you're right. I really didn't want to come out here. I didn't really know what else to do. Like, I don't know. The original else. plan was good. A Big Sur. Big Sur sounded great. But Big Sur is more crowded than Joshua Tree. And so the reason we're not in the park, but we're nearby, is Joshua Tree has a cool rule where if all the campsites are reserved, there's just desert out there you can just go to. You can kind of just pull off the side of the road. Right. And park so, your car, <laughs> pitch your tent. Today, how clutch was that park ranger we talked to? So we, we really show up like not knowing anything. Like I know th- I, I looked on a map. There's like certain areas you can go to, and we have this like we haven't told him about our tent. Oh, but, <laughs> well, we have a fucked up tent. I mean, we're just like talking about so many different points of this story. Like there's really no coherence in what we're actually saying so far. So but... we went to this park ranger. <laughs> so I mean, okay, we found so him today, and what was the, the only two things he told us? The right? first thing he says, "All right, so you guys are not staying at a campsite." So camp here. This is the area where you can camp Joshua for free. Joshua Tree Lake. Josh, go to Joshua Tree Lake. Camp here. Oh, you guys want to go on a, like a challenging good hike? That's not going to be too crazy crowded. All right, let's go to Raymond's Pat Raymond's Mountain. Ryan's Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> Ryan's Mountain, and it's uh, quite a challenging trail. And he said, "quote unquote," you will not run into a lot of old people on this trail. Which proved to be wrong. There are a lot of white people on the trail. There's a predominantly <laughs> white people on this trip. All white tri- people. Predominantly white people on this trip, except for the Asian family we camped to next to last night. Yeah, and so that's why we woke up this morning. <laughs> the little Asian children. I thought it must have been like 9 a.m. because I woke up to the sound of them doing math problems. And it was closer to They're about multiplying set, fractions. It was closer <laughs> to it was pretty clo- pretty not long after uh, sunrise, so it was probably around 7 a.m. today. Probably 7 a.m. These little Koreans. I'm yeah. guessing they're Korean. Just based on stereotypes. <laughs> and their last name, Lee. Was it? Yes. It's verified? Yes. Okay. So, yes, uh, Koreans. And it's, it's another, so, going back to another topic we introduced a couple minutes ago but didn't explain. Uh, when we arrived last night, we drove in, we left um, Orange County around 4.30 p.m. yesterday to right. drive out to Joshua Tree. As soon as you got off work, we so made moves. I got off work at 2. I had to go to the bank. I had to, you know, pack and do s- some things before we left. So hectic. So, so we, le- we got on the road around 4.30. I fell asleep on a nap around 5. And then I woke up, I think, probably around 6.30, 7. Um, by then, we did probably got to our campsite, I think, probably around 8. <laughs> it was dark. It was dark. It was when way we, after dark. We, we rolled into our Completely campsite around dark. 8 p.m. Um, and then... The Very fir- poorly prepared. We, yeah, we get the tent bag out. We get we get everything close to the campsite. I, you know, we open up the tent, get the tent on the ground. I open up the, you know, the tent poles bag. I, t- I open it up, pick up the first pole, and... All the poles connected to this pole by the string, they all fall <laughs> off the string because 
the the string had rotted by the time <laughs> from since its last use. So you know we we're separating all the poles, and there's about five different pieces of string that can, disconnected from the, the uniform pieces <laughs> of string. Completely useless. Yeah, completely. So completely we had, useless. So we had a bunch of like one like you know one and a half foot poles that we basically had no use. So we uh, what we did was we took you know. We took the uh, three chairs that we brought. I insisted on bringing an extra chair. For, for the two of us. For the two of us. We had three <laughs> chairs. I ins- for some reason, I insisted on bringing a third chair, which turned out to be a blessing in disguise because Super. we used that third chair. We used the three chairs to prop up the tent, and then we kind of slept in the tent last night, <laughs> makeshift, you know, without any kind of props or support. It looked like a hurricane had hit us. Yeah, it was like, very... It's just a deflated tent. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah, it was very vagrant, I must say. All right, so then we tried to light a fire. How'd that go? It failed because we, we only had some, you know, semi-damp. Like the wood is too. It, like it's it had been raining the past couple of weeks on and off. So like this is wood we got from your backyard. We got this wood from like my wood pile in the backyard. So it's not the driest wood you can get, but no, not ready. Not and ready we we burned up like half a newspaper trying to get it started. Ended up not getting lit. So we decided to go to our neighbor's one over next to the Asian Asian well, family we're, next we're to us. We're faced with the dilemma. Remember we were talking True about this. it. We actually thought that we would just be sitting in the sitting in the um, tent with a flashlight. Like we discussed that. We're like we could do that. Right? We thought we thought you know it was either we're gonna get this fire started and we're gonna sit around the fire and drink and smoke, or we're gonna sit in the tent with the flashlight and drink and smoke. Like, was, you know, those are the two options. Those Which honestly the t- wouldn't have been that bad, but luckily we didn't have to do that. It would have been. Yeah, we would. We were both okay with those two options, but luckily we decided to go to improvise and we went to the nearest fire that we could see. And we went up to this uh, random Ohio cup, Ohioan couple. Yeah. Asked them if we could borrow some lighter fluid or something like that. They ended up giving us their entire lighting, you know, the materials that they the used. Whole their kit. whole campfire kit because they were yeah. leaving the next day. And then they also invited us to hang out with them at their already massive campfire. And they gave us beer and we smoked s'mores. and s'mores. And then we just like, we smoked them out. And it was just like, Quite a community, a communal effort. Oh, so great! And it, was, it was fantastic. So blown away. Yeah, it was like, honestly, it was it was like a it was probably one of the highlights of the trip. It might be the highlight of the trip, to be honest. What so else one, has been a highlight? Oh, so where are we now? Like, how did we get here, Rex? What was the process of getting to this campsite, this non-sanctioned so Joshua Tree campsite? After we left the Irv- you know, Indian Cove, you know, we uh, we realized, all right, we need to find a place to camp next. We can either stay on the the complete opposite side of the uh, Joshua Tree National Park, which is close to the Coachella Valley, or we could stay on this side of the National Park, which is along the 62 Highway. Yeah. So we went to the uh, Utah, uh, Utah Trail um, Visitor Center, and we asked them. So we went to the, the uh, camp director, which the story we j- that we just explained earlier, the ranger. Yeah. The ranger. We the said, ranger. all right, where should we and stay? And he just pointed like, Go here. He said, pointed so at two drove. spots on the map. Two spots on the map. He said, all right, camp here, you know, Joshua Tree Lake, hike here, Ryan Mountain. And then that was, that was pretty much the entire conversation. We didn't ask any other questions. We're like, oh, I got it. Exactly. See you. <laughs> so then we drove out. We, like, we drove, you know, down to 62, kind of the way we like came. five miles. Yeah, to kind of the yeah. way we came. Five miles away from Joshua Tree. Exactly. Turned from right park. and kept going away from Joshua Tree National Park and drove down this highway for about 10 minutes. And then we came to this dirt road, and then the whole time I was kind of actually imagining there'd be a lake out here somewhere. <laughs> I mean, I mean, middle of the desert, just a lake. Yeah, a it's big, completely, complete lake. illogical and <laughs> irrational thinking. I thought there'd be some kind of lake out here. Yeah, probably dried up, you know, a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. So then, um, I don't know. We just were driving around these dirt roads, and so we saw a big campsite. It's like there's a lot of people there now. It's probably like a hundred acres. And just like all these like uh, tables sporadically around, but mm-hmm. it's not pretty. It's like you're fenced in. There's it's like, desolate. Yeah, it's very desolate. And so we said, "Fuck it," and just kept driving. Like and imagine, just kept driving. Imagine tumbleweeds blowing by the wind, <laughs> like around like fire pits and like gas canisters and like, stuff. Compared like compared to Joshua Tree, which like, if you haven't been there, it's just the most beautiful stacks of rocks. Yeah. For as far as you can see. There's like actually we're act, there's actually two different deserts that converged in Joshua Tree National Park, the Mojave Desert and the Colorado Desert. 
I think it's the Colorado desert that has most of the most of the actual Joshua trees. That makes sense. And I think the I think we're right now we're staying in the Mojave Desert. I think the more desolate, side. the more desolate, the yeah. hotter. It's more hot. It's you know there's, there's more shrubbery and you know shit. It's not as nice. It's not very nice. <laughs> yeah, we've determined um, because we determined we hiked at Ryan's Mountain today, and there's a really nice uh, campsite next to it called Sheep's Pass. Yeah. So next time we stay in uh, Joshua Tree, we're gonna stay at Sheep's Pass. That one's in a really cool area. Like it, that's a spot where you can just walk for like a day. Exactly. Like it's there's gonna be like there's the huge rock formations around it. It's just down the road from Ryan's Mountain. Which was which has a huge panoramic view at the very. It's like a, you climb a thousand a thousand meet, a thousand feet into the air. Um, it says it's the whole hike up and ba- up and down is about two to three hours. I think we did it today in about ninety minutes. Actually, <laughs> yeah. yeah, with like chilling too. Like we told jokes to everyone we passed. Yeah, and we hung e- out at the top for a while. I must say that you know we both we had a very you know. Temp, tepid pace today like <laughs> like you led for probably like two thirds of it up the hill at a quick pace and then I took over probably maybe the last third to a quarter and I didn't let up the pace like yeah. you know like we kept the entire like it was probably like a solid burn the entire way up that's what I feel like we've been doing since we got here though like as soon as we arrived obviously we were like because when we were setting up camp last night, we were only doing it by the light of the car. Exactly. Which I know is not a sustainable thing. You can't just leave car lights on the whole time. You can't. So we had, like, we've kept that pace of just, like, all right, let's get this fucking tent up. It's let's just, get the fuck up this mountain. It's ball, it was, like, balls to the wall the whole time. It was, like, all right, we got to get the tent up. All right, the tent's broken. All right, what do we do? All right, well, we have three <laughs> yeah. chairs. All right, we're going to set the three chairs up. All right, fine. All right, the tent's good. All right, now we so need we, a fire. All right, now we have all the sleeping shit in there. All right, good. All right, now we need fire. All right. Marshall, bring me the firewood. Ah, shit, not that great. That was bring a me some, time, yeah. Bring me some like a couple newspapers. <laughs> bring me a couple more newspapers. Like, slow down, Rex. We don't have that many. Bring newspapers. me, a, bring me a couple more newspapers. You know, like the by like the sixth newspaper. You know, like we're like, I don't think we can get a fire. So I was like, I think you recommended like, can we? Let's try to ask somebody else. Yeah, so yeah, then yeah. we went over to you know two neighbors down. Brian and Erica. Brian, yeah, we met new Our friends, new Brian and, and Erica Joshua from from Ohio. And um, they... I mean, now it's a good time. You see the stars are coming out? Yeah, exactly. That's one of the things I'm most excited for. Like, we were joking about it earlier. I don't think we'll be up much longer. No. Like, the sun just went down. The sky is still kind of bright. Like, the stars are just starting to come out. I'm on my second beer. Uh, but, oh, we got these tall cans of Goose Island, which is, like, an amazing thing. 2.30 a piece. Two, really they're 2.30 to for a cup. 2.30 for two, right? 3.50 for two. Or 3.50 for two, yeah. For 16-ounce Goose Islands. Just like made me feel really appreciative. Like that's such a new thing to have this much craft beer just everywhere. But man, Arco and Joshua Tree. We were talking like, about what the. We were fuck? talking about how earlier, like how our parents, like for your parents, Heineken was the nicest beer they could drink. For my dad, yeah. Like yeah. to this day, like when he started buying me beer, like we'd always go to Charger Games and tailgate. Yeah. And he always tried to buy me, like you know, he's trying to be nice, and he give me a Heineken. I'm like, oh, this is like the worst thing I've had. Like, yeah, there's craft beer. I guess a snob, <laughs> which is kind of the cool thing what about you, how it. How did like, you how did you get around that? Like, what I just did you told tell him, him I was like, Dad, this isn't good beer. He's like, What? Did like, you... I've been to the brewery in Amsterdam. <laughs> 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 that doesn't make it good. Yeah, dang. Like, but I know I know exactly what he means. Like, in his day and age, craft beer. Was, how long has craft beer been a thing? Like, just since we started drinking. Ten years, I think. Like, love it, man. But I mean, like, I didn't really look into beers when I was like. When I was in high school and like early college, like the beers everyone drank was Coors Light or like you know yeah. Miller Light or something like so that. So the difference between you and me is I grew or USD was right across the street from Ballast Point. Oh yeah, yeah. So I got the education there. Like my senior year, we we're just ditching class to go there. Uh, Fridays, I'd fill up a growler. Yeah. Just a like, huge jug. Yeah, yeah, I know like, growlers. Five beers or so. Yeah. And go down to the beach with it. But also, Colin Keith moved down, and he's a beer brewing master. Really? And so we, he would host beer tastings, like just me and him. Really? Like, and <laughs> he was so like he's so official about it. Like he's legitimate like beer connoisseur, and so he would be having these things and have notebooks out, and like write down like mm, hint of pine, or you really? know what I mean, like yeah, yeah, fancy yeah. things. And my notes are always like, mm, good. <laughs> I, know. It I like tasty. I like this flavor. <laughs> you know, like it is nice. This brand is good. <laughs> <laughs> I loved them all. I know. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. I never did that. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I went to UCI. There's no breweries around there that I know of. There are now. Oh, really? Uh, I mean, Valley Forge isn't that far. I don't know. That's the only one I know of. I yeah. assume there's others. 
Vice Lumen's everywhere, man. The people from Ohio, uh, Brian and Erica, they're like, have you guys had this Cleveland beer? And like, I believe, oh, yeah, yeah. I believe them that it's good. I just like never heard of it. It's like, it's becoming the new, like, it's not really hipster anymore to brew your own beer. No, it's standard. used to be very it's hipster. the way it is. Yeah. I remember so used what, to be, your beer's going to be good? Used to be like yeah. only men, like brunette men with beards. Right, you know, it was like <laughs> that's not imagine a guy. Like back, like ten years ago, those are the only people who brewed their own beer. You what know, are you basing this on <laughs> just I just I have no I, nothing honestly, just an, an image in my head honestly. Just stereotype. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fair enough. That's a good way to go. But yeah, so we got a couple more days here. Right now, I guess it's Wednesday. And we're here tomorrow night. We just do so much. We've done so much since we got here. It's been know? the longest day. If you, I know. The I've, days lasted about 12 hours. Literally. And we've hiked three times. We drove a lot. Yeah. A lot more than expected. But Joshua is such a nice place to drive through, man. Like, it's it might not, be the best. It's not, I mean, it's, yeah. We were listening to some tunes. Yeah. Wait, we, well, let's see what we listened to. What do you remember? I mean, we listened to a very nice, we listened to, a, like, very nice Dirty Heads. Oh, yeah. And then I remember the last thing we were listening to. The most recent one. The yeah. last thing we were listening to was the, uh, what was it? The uh, Led Zeppelin... The Doors, ACDC CD made a CD that I made ten, ten years ten, ago. When you're I'm 15. so proud of myself. Like that's such a good CD. We never, we didn't get to the uh, ACDC part yet, though. We got, True. we got through the Doors, and we listened to like probably over half of Led, maybe half of Led Zeppelin. Yeah. I'm not really sure. Maybe over half. Matt, you would have loved it. My Jiu Jitsu Academy in San Diego. Yeah. The head instructor, Rodrigo Maderos, his favorite band, like by a long shot, is ACDC. Yeah. So anytime he's teaching. You can almost not hear what he's saying because he's just blaring E C D. Really? And like their early CDs, like stuff I haven't listened to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're more bluesy. And like, like when they had the old, the, the old singer Bon yeah, Scott. The original one. Yeah, Bon yeah, Scott. Yeah. He's yeah. all about Bon Scott. He told me like, he stopped class to be like, Bon Scott is the greatest. <laughs> like, that's not what he sounds like. I wish I could do his accent better, but like, <laughs> bro. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you know, everything he says, bro. Prime lib. <laughs> no, it's not that one. It's not that one. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Okay. That was a different that was, that was <laughs> Makoto Ogasawara Taiwan A Japanese man and I told Rex earlier He walked into A Thanksgiving dinner In Taiwan And with her arms out Excitedly Stopped traffic To go <gasps> Prime lip <laughs> Yeah <laughs> That's so funny <laughs> It's so great Isn't it great When stereotypes are true Sometimes Cause like Oh so <coughs> When we arrived In Joshua Tree I consider myself A white man because I'm burning, uh, we're camping, that's kind of a white activity. But then today at Ryan Mountain, we saw the whitest people on earth. What were they doing? They had fanny packs, they all yeah, had hats on. They had shorts, and they had shorts. Uh, the dry uh, dry fit Nike uh, like half zips. <laughs> Is that what they all had? Yeah, with uh, camelbacks, and they had <laughs> hiking shoes probably similar to us, probably newer models, though. Okay, and then, yeah, our shoes are pretty nice. And then, like, the sunglasses that, you know, like, the uh, ergonomical, you know, air-resistant, you know, air-efficient <laughs> sunglasses on, too. To help them get up the mountain faster. Yeah, the visors. And they're all slightly overweight too. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone was. That's slight. where we're blowing it, man. Everyone... We gotta fit in with our own kind. We gotta be a little fatter. Exactly. Because <laughs> we've been eating well today, man. We had the, the oatmeal with avocado, banana, peanut butter. That was breakfast. a very good breakfast to have. And then for dinner, we just had a shitload of vegetables mixed in with a hot dog. We sautéed it over uh, the fire that we made. Yeah. Which is nice. It's so, badass, man. It's still going too. We just burn like we could just burn like one log at a time. It yeah, be good. Yeah, it's gonna just keep going for a while until we pass out. <laughs> Should be. Is that the last of the wood that we have uh, over here? There's a whole other cart in the in the in the car. Oh yeah, a whole other bucket. No, like, yeah. that's like another like hour of fire right there. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Because like we can look at the log that hasn't even like barely burned yet. Fuck yeah! It's man. great. Whoever's gonna listen to this podcast has no idea what we're talking about. But... No, we're painting an image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To our right is the car. To the left, we have a shitty tarp strung over the fire. <laughs> it's hard to tell if it's making a difference. I think it helped. I like to think it helped. So. It helped earlier when it was windier. It's there's no. It used to be a lot windier earlier, and the tarp helped catch the heat and kind of push it out. But it also pushed smoke into our face, which wasn't that great. Yeah, that sucked. Um, but right now, it's like there's no wind, and I feel like the heat, like the tarp, is catching the heat and pushing it out to us. Yeah, the, the phrase I keep telling you, and I honestly believe it. Irie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so lots of things are iry, <laughs> but what I was going to say is um, I have the distinct feeling right now when everything's like chill like this and everything's perfect, yeah. like we're rich men, truly rich. 
Yeah, there's no. Like there's, this is not an expensive trip we're doing, but we're doing it like rich men. Yeah, I haven't spent any money. We have excess. We're in yeah. excess right now. We have exactly. a fuckload of food. Um, not no extra beer, but like enough. Like we, yeah, have, we have two muds left. Yeah, Mississippi mud, like a jug of beer. That's two and a half beers um, per jug and right there. I had there. one beer last night. I had two. Yeah, but like heavy ones. Like oh, I almost gotta tell people what, what's the name of this beer we're drinking? The 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 Trader Joe's one. Oh, it's, it's like two thirty. Last night you drank the double the Boatswain double IPA. Boatswain, man, two thirty at Trader Joe's, the best camping beer possible. And then like right it's thick, it's heavy, here. it's eight point four percent. Tonight, At least what the one I had. Tonight, what I'm drinking is the uh, Boatsway American IPA. Marshall ha- actually hasn't had a sip of it yet. He's about to take Live his first sip. Live on the air, Tales of the Cock podcast. We're going to try this beer. What'd you think? Uh, the other one was a lot better. Really? <laughs> well, it might be this Goose Island. This Goose Island's really good. It's That's probably wetting your palate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. That's a, a you're a much energy. more you're really of a you're much down. more of a IPA fan than I am too. True. Like, I like I like you last night like the only kind of I really had the only the only sips I had were warm too. I never had yeah. any, any cool sips. That's why it's good though. Like some cheap beer you can drink uh, warm, and I think Trader Joe's is good about that. You can drink you could drink Mississippi Mud warm, and we're going to. Yeah, I I've done that before actually. Fuck yeah, but yeah, I think this is a good idea. I think this is the best thing I could do before I started work. Because I am a bit, like, worried about this. But it's just so interesting. I can't get over how cool it was that I had this crossroads in life where I moved back to my parents' house at the beginning of the month, flew to Toronto, had that epic interview, came back, got to work on getting a job. And I had... The the fork in the road came when I got a job at the float center mm-hmm. doing uh, sensory deprivation tanks. Mm-hmm. They just work in there, just putting people in, explaining the rules, keeping it clean. Like, a simple job, but, like, something that I've dreamt about before. Like, I really want to own one of those places. That's, like, a big a goal of mine. Yeah. Because have you been in the sensory deprivation? Not thing? yet. We've you talked about love this. It, yeah, I know. It's just the coolest thing. Like, everyone comes out super relaxed, super iry, and then you can just hang out with them. And that dude's making bank. Like, he's booked. He's going to be open all night soon just to, just so, like, people can come in there. And by so the, by the way, was, just as on a side oh note, my God. the fire just burned really loudly in the speakers. Yeah. So, yeah, like, the the fire, like, we only have two logs burning right now, but it's burning really fucking loud, like, just as an FYI, but continue your story. Yeah, they know. They noticed. Uh, <laughs> obviously. Okay, like, so the crossroads it. was, I got that job, and then I, at the same time, the same day, I went in to, for that accounting interview, which went super well. They were just like, dude, you can do this job, like, we'll pay you. When can you start? Yeah. Basically, and then just to be make sure, I went to Trader Joe's, your work, mm-hmm. and applied there as well. And so the crossroads became like, what kind of life do I want? Do I want to go to the office, or do I want to like stick out this like um, freewheeling, like feel good, yeah. hippieish lifestyle that I've been doing for two and a half years? Right, like yeah. I graduated college two and a half years ago, and essentially retired right away. Yeah, like I went backpacking, I taught English, I drove Uber to San Diego the past six months, like. I don't think I've worked yet. <laughs> yeah, not, <laughs> you know? not really. And so I just had that, that crossroads. Like, do I want to just stick around Costa Mesa, work at the Float Center, and Trader Joe's? But or I mean, like, stack cash in the accounting office. Yeah. It's and like I a, sold out right away, took yeah. the accounting job. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> and so we'll see how it goes. You know, I think, like, for, for science purposes, this is almost a better way to go about it because we'll see. Like, I've kind of demonized the profession in my mind. Just, like, I kind of had to in order to justify going traveling for so long. Yeah. It's like, well, at least I'm not stuck in that shitty office. Um, I imagine it's a very unhealthy place. Yeah. You know, which didn't, like, help that all, everyone who works in my new office, like, I shouldn't say everyone, but a lot of the people don't look very healthy, right? They're not, they're, they had, their skin's not good. They're, yeah. They're uh, overweight. Their posture's not good. Yeah. You know, all of these, like, signs that you can, like, first impression style uh, health diagnoses. Right. I don't think diagnosis is, is <laughs> diagnoses. A word. Diagnoses. Um, so it's just interesting to find out, man. Like, but can I, I keep up a healthy lifestyle? Yeah, no. I think the thing that I've demonized. I think though that you've realized that you, it's you've, you've lived a healthy lifestyle up until now, and you found out what you like. You like jujitsu. You like drinking Love tea. It. You know, like you do yoga. You do meditations and stuff like that. I think that after you start this job, I think you'll you'll find a way to be able to fit those things into your life so that you're able to maintain a healthy lifestyle, you know, on top of working 
a nine to you know forty hour a week job. Yeah, it might even be depending on how efficient you are on your job. It might be fifty hours a week. You know, like I don't know what kind of hours you're going to be working or what responsibilities you're going to have. You know. Yeah, he made it sound like there's not much. Oh really? You know what I mean? Like it's not like a stressful job. That's something they kept telling me. Like, yeah, it's not a stressful. Oh job. then I mean it's probably going to be chill. Then actually, yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like I'll be good at it, right? Like, I was pretty good at school. Yeah. And it sounds a lot like school. So you just got to do it. And I'm, I'm very lucky that there's a 10th planet in Costa Mesa. True that. Because I fucking love that place, man. I'm straight back to White Belt when I go there. Really? Like, I'm just getting smoked by these guys. Really? Yeah, just because they do something so different, right? Like, they they, do if you don't do jujitsu, it's right? kind of hard to understand that all my other schools I've been to, and this is like the fifth one that I'm going to sign up at, yeah. I bounced around, right? That's a bit rare for someone who's only been doing it three years like I have. Yeah. Um, but I've been in lots of different academies, but most of them in classical where you, like, train in a gi. It's Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. You know, you train like Elio. You practice moves. A lot of moves are illegal, mm-hmm. particularly foot locks, leg locks, heel hooks. Tenth Planet says, fuck that. We don't do any gi. It's all no gi. Uh, we learn heel hooks whenever. They do twisters, which is a spinal crank. Most badass move in jiu-jitsu, but it's illegal. Like, you can't do it at the world championship. Yeah. And, but Competitively, one guy, it's, Ill- it's illegal, right? For the most part, yeah. Some tournaments now have wisened up and been like, yeah, but it's badass. Why do they do no gi? Like, what's, like... It, it's more applicable to MMA. Okay. Yeah, so that's a big thing that changed in jiu-jitsu, is the UFC came about in 93. So... Would, I mean, does would gis, in, like, inhibit you in an MMA... MMA? competition yeah so guys used to wear them it used to be optional what you wanted to wear it was it's not like nowadays you can only wear like shorts and no shirt and no shoes yeah but it used to be you could wear a gi but the thing is is that if the other guy's not wearing a gi and he knows how to use it against you he can strangle you with your own gi it only it only makes sense if the other guy's also wearing one you know what i mean yeah like realistically in a competitive environment like hoist gracie got away with wearing one in the first four ufcs yeah just because no one else knew what the fuck he was doing really but like a couple years later people like caught on yeah and then Did he it get was choked out because him. of it yeah, yeah you can choke like you can take your own collar and like bring it across your throat yeah and so just imagine the guys doing that to both sides yeah it cuts off your carotid arteries and so that's a choke and so that didn't happen to Hoist, but he got held down by a gi. Like, Sakuraba's wearing these, like, <laughs> small-ass orange shorts. Yeah. Essentially wearing nothing. Yeah. And just pinned down Hoist by grabbing his gi. And so, Eddie Bravo, the grandmaster of 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. saw this and was just like, No Fuck gi. That. Like, no why gi. are we doing this? Like, I need to help these guys. Yeah. You know, he had a very, like, good mission about it. Like, he's going to go in there and help the UFC guys. Just make it very and real, guys right? He has. Yeah. What? Just make it very real. Yeah, yeah, exactly, as real as possible, mm-hmm. which, like, a lot of jiu-jitsu schools are geared towards competition, and competition has is not a real fight anymore, you know? Like, right. there's no punches, there's no slams, a lot of things have been taken out of it. In jiu-jitsu which, or MMA? In jiu-jitsu. Yeah. To make it safer. Yeah. And so, it's just, it's the way sports go, that's how all martial arts have become, like, uh, Olympic karate mm-hmm. is not very good for streets. Oh, you know really? What I mean? Yeah. But there are karate schools that will help you, like, if you're getting robbed yeah. or something. And so it's just natural, like, uh, to divide like that. Yeah. And so my point is, is I'm getting fucked up at this 10th Planet place. Because you learn. <laughs> I'm just getting strangled by new guys. I'm getting heel hooked in ways I've never seen. Yeah. I signed up for a tournament two weeks ago and got knee barred. I've yeah. never practiced a knee bar. Really? Yeah, I don't know how to get out of that. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to learn. Yeah. And that's the most exciting thing. Like, I have a whole new arsenal now. It's really cool. That's so. That's so sick. Yeah, and it just. Like, I think that's a really like key component to like working this job is that I have something outside of the job that I'm way more stoked on. Yeah. You know, I think that like something you you can look forward to at the end of the day. Yeah, because Pedro was telling me about that. Like he said, he when he worked in Hollywood, he worked in an accounting firm in Hollywood. Uh huh. Or a financial firm, but it's a similar job. Right. And um, he just come home and like there's no friends around. There's nothing to do. He come out like five or six, or right? What? He come out like five or six. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm grateful, man. I'm stoked. I think it's going to work out pretty well. Especially because last week I spent uh, 100% in meditation. That's right. Tell me about that. It was at a, a Zen retreat with uh, Three Treasures Zen Community in San Diego. I had um, 
uh, sensei Annie Piricello on the podcast a while ago, and it was awesome. But um, what did you guys talk about? Uh, just Zen. Okay. Me. Uh-huh. You know, like all my podcasts, I just mm-hmm. want people to talk about me. Yeah. yeah. That's the whole reason I do this. It's a very personal affair. Oh, it's so selfish. I know. It's a love it. Um, it's just me. I'm just here feeding you your ego. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, we can talk about your life, but my life, man. Oof. Yeah, that's, all, that's great, <laughs> but let's talk more about what I did. Right? <laughs> but, okay, so anyway, I went to the Zen retreat. And, you know, it's just um, the way Zen retreats work is you wake up really early in the morning and you meditate in two-hour sessions. Mm -hmm. So throughout the day, there's four two-hour sessions of meditation. And in between, you're napping, you're cooking. Um, There's things to do. But for the most part, you're just meditating and hanging out. Right. You know, not not talking too much. A little bit. Like, it's not an official. Like, in Japan, you get smacked if you talk. At, like, real Zen retreats, like old school. Yeah. Um, this one's a more, it's full of white people. So <laughs> they're like, eh, it's not do the rules. Um, so, you know, some people were talking, but just for the most part, like, don't say anything, don't talk about anything dumb. Yeah. This is essentially the thing. Like, right. Like, no, la- un- last no night, unnecessary talking. Yeah, right. So last night, it was kind of necessary to have small talk with those people because we just approached them in the darkness and it was like, hey, how's it going? And so we kind of have to keep the conversation up. Why did you approach them there. like that? At last night at the fire. Oh yeah. Um, cause oh, 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 oh us last night. Yeah. yeah I, th- so I thought you were talking about people at the retreat. I'm Sorry. just contrasting like the conversation level necessary. Yeah. At like meeting new people around a fire with its darkness, they don't know us. Yep. And we just kind of had to have that exchange of goods. Like here, smoke this. Like we'll take your beer and it, it, <laughs> to build camaraderie really quickly. A barter system. Whereas at the Zen retreat, like there's nothing they can do for us. Like food's being prepared. Um, there's no danger of anyone. And so any small talk at that point would just be forced, like, awkward. Right. Um, I mean, and awkward is maybe not the right way, but you know what I mean? Like, it's not important. It's not vital. Like, these right. are people you already like. Nothing's going on at the moment. Right. Uh, politics are, like, the number one, like, fallback for, especially people of that age. Like, it should be noted right. that everyone there was, like, over 50. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Which I shouldn't really say, like, maybe someone will listen to that and be like, I'm fucking 47. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know how yeah. old they are. But my point is that they're a full generation above me. Right. <laughs> you know? And so to actually talk to those people would be like... Um, it's kind of like how last it's night... It's unnecessary. It's like last night, like, communicating between our group and Brian and Erica was necessary for... Multi- Absolutely well, for multiple For multiple reasons. Like, yes. Not only did we need the mutual like social interaction that we got, which was great, it you awesome. know, it made the night, but also we like we exchanged goods and like we're allowed to get high. Uh, everyone everyone got high together and it was like an amazing time. You know, yeah, and it was great. Like socially, culturally, like everything was great. Yeah, exactly, and that's yeah. necessary. And it's cool to have like both those dynamics, like going from the Zen retreat to that, and even on uh, on Sunday, man. I came out of the so I came out of the Zen retreat on Saturday. My phone hadn't been off all week. And I got a text from my dad that just said, "Do you want to see David Gilmore tomorrow?" And I just texted back, "Yes." But out loud I went, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> and so we went on Sunday, man. And I gotta tell you, it was like might have been the best concert I've seen. Yeah. David Gilmore of Pink Floyd, the lead singer and guitarist. Where exactly was it? The Forum in Inglewood. Oh, same place we saw the Foo Fighters. That's exactly right. But now it's a nice place. What do you Remember mean? Remember when we went there? It wasn't like... Yeah, it was kind of ratty it, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of... Exactly, kinda, it was run down. Yeah, kind of. So the, the company that owns Madison Square Garden put $50 million into it. Are you serious? And now it's like, um, like you're in like movie theater seats. It's all like... Um, it's all because we had definitely like red. stadium seating, no pads, nothing like that. Right, so it's the same setup, like it's still the structure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think this is gonna be the hardest podcast to listen to just because we're making so much noise. My, my eating, making a lot of noise in it. Yeah, but it's right. also like the chairs and the fire and like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah. damage has been done. But yeah. um, so the David Gilmore concert is just incredible, man. Like he went on like at eight o'clock, got off stage at ten thirty. Two and a half hours of playing time. With a 15-minute intermission. And he played a lot of new songs, which are really dope. And then he played Wish You Were Here. He played Shine On You Crazy Diamond. <laughs> he played some Dark Side of the Moon songs. played Time, Comfortably Numb. Yeah. Us and Them, Money. Yeah. Uh, and some old, like really old songs, too. And it's just really cool the way they've done it. Like Pink Floyd's known as like a light show band. Like They revolutionized the light 
lights going on during concerts, right, you know? Right. And so the way they did it during this show, you could tell how old the song was based on how, like, the lights were going. What do you mean? Like, when they went to some of their first albums, like, albums I've never listened to. Right. Just, like, early, early on. Um, the lights would get, like, old school, like, just primary colors in circles. Simple lighters. Simple Super lights, simple, right? simple, but, like, yeah. lots of them. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, you can picture, like, disco lights weren't fancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compared to, like, I don't know who, like, Bass Nectar lights or Pretty Lights. <laughs> pretty, based on Pretty Lights, right? Yeah, like, that's, yeah. like, the the complete contrast. And so that's how it was. Like, they, they had such, uh, so fucking cool. Right. David Gilmore's just shredding, sounded beautiful. But so then his new songs had much better light shows compared to the older songs. It's contemporary, then, right? yeah. yeah. Not, not better, just different. Different, okay. Yeah. Because, you know, the, the quality is there the whole time. Right, and yeah. It's good. It was just so sick, man. And, your, I mean, your dad seemed to be stoked on life about this concert, too, right? Yeah, I've never seen him happier. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the first time I went to a concert with him, which I think he really liked. Yeah. And then it's just cool the way it worked out, man. Like, we just showed up there. Um, he got the tickets the day before, so, like, we didn't have How did he get much them? time to think about. Uh, just a work connection. Like, okay, he yeah. just works with these guys who work with guys. Yeah, yeah. You know? I know, I know somebody like that. And so we've... Um, so it's the same guy that got me Foo Fires tickets when I saw them in October. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and same thing, just like a couple days before, like, oh, do you want to go? Like, fuck, yeah. Right, of course. Yeah. And um, it's just so great. So it's just been a really good like, couple of weeks is what I'm saying. And it's just such a cool, like, transitionary period. Is, is your dad a, a really big Pink Floyd fan? Like yeah, you? the last time we saw them was the Dark Side of the Moon tour 40 years ago. How old was he? 20? 20, yeah. 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 Dang, that's. <laughs> I mean, like I'm. I honestly don't don't know what to say to that because I just can't. It's so ridiculous. Because I, it's like if you know Marshall and I, if you know us, you know that we would probably give at least one of our testicles to be able to live in that time period again to see those kind of concerts uh, and stuff like that live in their prime. In their prime, Jesus yeah. Christ, because man. we in our youth. You know, we went to a lot of concerts of seeing. We saw Sticks, we saw Foreigner, we saw Def Leppard, we saw Poison. All in the same show. You know, I, like Def Leppard went on tour with just like they'd always stack yeah, yeah. Like three classic bands. We saw and we went to that twice. We saw the Who, we saw Foo Fighters, we yeah. saw Against Me, we saw Surge Tanking. You know, we've seen, <laughs> we've seen so many artists, but they've all of them have not been in their prime. And maybe Foo, Foo Fighters, Fighters was Foo in Fighters their prime. The one, That's we saw them in their prime. That's the one reason I can't say like uh, when people try to talk shit on. Uh, new music like it's a popular thing amongst, yeah. amongst like our generation be like Led Zeppelin was good yeah, what's yeah. going on now like comparing Led Zeppelin to Nicki Minaj is not a fair comparison you, you can't right? do that no like the Foo Fighters are around they're amazing yeah. still their new stuff is incredible yeah. Portugal the Man who I'm gonna go see in June is fucking killing it like yeah. what do you mean there's no good music yeah it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's a false thing right but it is kind of cool these old bands are coming back. Like you're going to Coachella where Guns N' Roses is playing. Yeah, the first time they've really all performed cool. together for, like, I think over, like, 20 years or something Jesus like that. Jesus Christ. That's the first time? I think all of them together. I think all of them together. <laughs> I know. I'm kind of scared. Like, I really, I, I haven't done any kind of research as to what kind of shape Axl Rose is in. Because. Yeah. Hard to say. Because, I mean, the last time he performed, like, that I heard of him performing was, like, he had... He's really fat, and he had cornrows, and he was, like, huffing and puffing around the stage, mm. like, in between lines and stuff like that. So, like, it just sounded terrible. So it might happen again, man. Like, when I, last time I went to Coachella, Stone Roses was playing. Stone Roses is a really big band, like, 20, 25 years ago. I yeah. went back and listened to music, and it's really cool. But the guy can't sing. It's, really? It's done, yeah. yeah. And so it is put on, like, a piss-poor performance. <laughs> yeah. But then Blur played, and Blur killed it. Do you listen to Blur? I've heard of Blur. Dude, it's the lead singer of Gorillaz. Okay. It's the same guy. Oh, really? Oh, my God. It's so good. I know. I haven't listened so to goofy. much Blur. They're so goofy, man. You'd love it. <laughs> they get so optimistic. Like, there's so much fucking music. Yeah. Like, I can't really say, like... Like, yeah, it would be cool to go back and see Pink Floyd in their prime, but it's also really cool to go to Coachella. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're going to be looking back, and it's hard to say who's going to make it through to, like, legendary status, like, to our grandkids' generation, like, yeah. who will listen to. But probably the Foo Fighters, like, yeah. why not? Like, they're, like, the best modern rock and roll band. Yeah. They are the best modern rock and roll band. I've thought that for a long time. It's. I think it's interesting is that, like, I'm going to go to Coachella. We've both gone to Coachella. And, I've been twice, yeah. And we've seen, this will be my second time. 
and we've seen artists that were not big then that are huge now. You know what I mean? Like who? Like let's see. I can't think of any off the top. Of my head. <laughs> Happens all the fucking all the time. time. <laughs> um, oh, uh, yeah, who was that's it? might be just me getting excited and a little bit of alcohol poison, like you know, yeah, amping me on too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. They're like artists rise and fall for like no apparent reason. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like I didn't know Calvin Harris would get this fucking big. Like I saw that guy like six years ago, and I was like, man, this guy's so like back when he was singing his own songs. Oh yeah, yeah. You know that was amazing. And then he just transitioned into this new thing. Like he upgraded like sixty eight times. His, I mean, he's a new, he's a uh, an industry. I saw, I saw Calvin Harris at EDC in twenty fifteen, and like I saw him like, like I've seen him a couple times before that, and like. Every time I go to his set, it's like there's a house party with all your friends at a rave. Really? I don't know. Like, his set is like a party at a rave. Mm, it's kind of like he takes, like, the party feeling, the party, like, you know, atmosphere, and he applies it to, like, the main stage of a festival or something like that. Yeah, it's cool you worded that way because that's the exact way Cascade always talked about playing. Yeah, I mean, when... It's like, I, let's just get together, we'll turn down the lights, yeah. we'll turn up the music, yeah. and we'll have fun. Exactly, like... That's the way he described all the Insomniac shows. Every single time I've seen... Like, I saw Cascade at Coachella two years ago, I saw Cascade at... Or not Cascade, uh, Calvin Harris. Mm. I saw him at EDC last year, like, it's exactly how it was. Like, I was with friends that I was with, like you know, close friends that I was with, and we all it just makes such like, a difference. Yeah, that too, yeah. you know, and like the stuff I was on was great too. Like it was just everything was just like a perfect storm of goodness. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's been a perfect storm of goodness, man. I'm sitting here, it's about time for a new beer. The campfire's winding down. I say we uh, turn off this recorder. How's that sound? I think it's time for the nightcap. All right. Well, thanks for listening, guys. Um, might be back. Maybe it'll be part two. Maybe. Let's we're, find out. We're gonna.